Hi, I'm Nicolene Peck, and today we're going to be talking about babysitting. I've got a pro babysitter with me here today, and we're going to talk about what to tell your babysitter. You know, as a parent, one of the most important things we ever do is find that person that we can trust when we have to step out for a minute. Maybe we have a doctor appointment, maybe we're even going on a trip. I mean, it could be a short term, it could be a long term, maybe there's some adjustment happening in our lives. I know friends who've had to employ nannies because they've got a child who was born a preemie and they've got to be at the hospital for months while their child's recovering and so then they've got other children who need help at home. Whatever your situation is, it is really important to know how to prepare and find that great babysitter. So I've got another video called what to look for in a babysitter. So be sure to find that one. And my same special guest and I give you great tips on what to look for in a babysitter. But in this video, I'm talking with Nicole, who is a pro babysitter, and she's going to give us even from her perspective, what she knows babysitters need to know from you when you're turning over the reins of your home and your family to them. So welcome, Nicole. And how about you tell us a little bit about just your history with babysitting? I mean, how long have you been babysitting and what kinds of experiences have you had? So I was first employed to be a babysitter when I was 16. So my first summer, I was 16 and I babysat for my first family with three little girls. And that's when I fell in love because I've been babysitting since I was like 12, just like little families, just for like Friday nights, but that was my first like every single day babysitting a family. And ever since then, I'm now 24, I babysat every summer. And I put myself through school through babysitting, being a mother's helper, and nannying, and yeah. You brought yourself through school. You've actually made enough money babysitting and you've done it enough that we're talking thousands and thousands of dollars yeah. to pay for your education. Yeah. So she is a very highly qualified babysitter. So Nicole, you've had all these experiences from the time you were 12 years old and I'm sure you've learned a lot along the way, right? Yeah. So I would love to know what kind of problems occur when parents don't tell their their babysitter the right kinds of things like what kind of problem communication or problems with preparing the babysitter have you noticed before I think just not having the most accurate information when walking into especially a new family that I've never babysat before just the parents not taking the time to explain to me a little bit about their kids and they've kind of just run out the door and I've been left in the dark and not knowing their routine not knowing their dinner like if they have dietary issues or like issues going to bed and it kind of left me just yeah hanging in the dark and I would have appreciated if they just took some time to give me the lowdown. Yeah day. so what you're saying is they were in a rush yeah right they didn't spend the time yeah. that they needed to and I think that's an important thing because sometimes you think okay well I'm I'm running from this thing to this thing to this thing the babysitter I've picked the best one I really looked into her so she's gonna just be able to handle everything <laughs> right? right and that's not necessarily true I mean you, you're going to figure stuff out, yeah. but why not make it easier on everybody? And I right? think it's easier for the kids when they're, they see me with the parents just for a little bit of time. It doesn't need to be like an hour, but just like even 20 minutes before you need to leave. I think it's securing for children to see me with their parents and then have the parents exit and then feel safe and secure with me being left with them. Mm. So it sounds like Nicole is suggesting to have the babysitter come early and to make Make sure that you are scheduling enough time in your day to make a good transition from how you run things to now this new babysitter, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great piece of advice. Super pro advice there. So when you're talking about them preparing the way for you, this person who's going to now take over the running of their home, their children, I mean, we're talking training the children, disciplining the children even. What are some key things that they need to tell you or walk you through? 
Um, I think the first thing is food. Nowadays, there's a lot of children that have dietary issues, and I know I've been in a circumstance before where they didn't tell me that their child had like a nut allergy, and it was a good thing they had an older sibling who told me, but I totally was about to feed them like nuts, and that would have been a disaster. <laughs> and so that was just, from then on, I always asked. I was proactive as a babysitter to ask for that, but it would have been nice if the parents would have thought about their kid and like, explain to me beforehand. You know, sometimes we just get going through life and we don't think, oh yeah, so-and-so has celiac disease. They probably shouldn't give her like that cereal, but maybe that one instead or something like that. So food is huge. And I think if the children feel like their food is disrupted, they feel like a lot of things are disrupted. So making sure the food, I love that. That's a really good first one. Food, number one. We got to remember that. Okay, so what's another thing? I mean, if you're going to really be able to take over for them, what's something else that they need to inform you about? I think just like disciplinary, like how they handle conflict and if their child has maybe like behavioral issues, especially with somebody new coming in, that could be a trigger for some children. And just seeing if they have ways that already set up, like a plan for when those happen. I know I have ways that I handle circumstances that might come up, but it's nice to have the parents like information also of how they already yeah handle it because you're wanting to support the parents yes right I mean that's the whole idea so I know that for me when I would ever leave my children with a babysitter which I have to admit I was not the big leave with the babysitter <laughs> parent because as we mentioned in the other video what, what to look for in a babysitter I felt like was not always a a ton of people around who I felt like met the bill because I'm picky. I'm, I'm just going to say that. I'm picky with who tends my children. Anyway, but I did whoever I left the children with, whether it was grandma who was babysitting or whether it was someone from our community or neighborhood like you would be coming in, I always made sure to tell them certain skills and things that we did as a family. So I'm known for teaching self-government all over the world and there are four basic skills that we teach to children. And in my home, my children have mastered these skills. So I would say to my babysitter, following instructions, accepting no answers and criticism, accepting consequences and disagreeing appropriately. So my children should be able to do all of these things. If you give them an instruction and they don't follow that instruction, that's when they would be corrected. And what we use for a correction is an extra chore. Now I may not tell her my full skill for how to do the correction because that might take a little bit of time, right? But I'm gonna tell her the steps to following an instruction and what my children are able to do. I might even have my child show her, do a role play, see, they can do this. And then tell her that she gets to give them an extra chore if they don't follow that instruction or accept those no answers. She needs to know what type of authority I'm going to give her. And if I don't want her giving out negative consequences, then I'm going to tell her, keep track of those things. And then when I get home, I'll make sure to do all of that corrective teaching and they'll get to the opportunity to earn those extra chores when I get home. So I think that's a big one, making yeah. sure the discipline is understood, right? Yeah. All right, so Nicole, we're coming up with some great things here, but I know that you have even more surprising. In fact, I think the one we're saving for the end is really the one that is like, you've got to remember this and you'll be glad you did, <laughs> right? But let's talk about first, what about that night routine? Yes, so nighttime routine is crucial. Just take some time and go through what your typical nighttime routine is. Because for kids, that can kind of be an insecure time for them, and that's when they start to act up. As soon as you know it's bedtime, you see like the kids sort of getting anxious, and I think if you already know their typical bedtime routine, or when I did, it made the kids feel a lot more at ease with going to bed. That's perfect. I love that. In fact, I'm envisioning bedtime routine being the songs you sing, maybe saying prayers, those types of things, reading a story, mm -hmm. but and brushing teeth and stuff. But also like, where are the pajamas? Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever had anyone tell, like say, okay, here we go and bye-bye and you don't even know where the pajamas are? Yes, and I have had to go like rummaging through all the drawers and I eventually like found the t-shirt but I never found their pajamas and it turned <laughs> out they didn't wear pajamas. That would have been nice to know <laughs> instead of me spending like 10 minutes trying to find 
their pajamas that were non-existent, but yeah. <laughs> Put this on. They're like, why? <laughs> I just sleep in my clothes. <laughs> they did. Yeah. Okay. Very interesting. Everyone's got their own way, right? Yeah. But we need to know those things. Where are the diapers? Mm -hmm. Where is yeah. the diaper rash ointment? Because this child has a rash right now. Yeah. Stuff like that. Medications. Mm -hmm. Those are going to be really important things, right? To also share. Okay. So what about, let's give them a little special tip that maybe they may not know. And I'm thinking along the lines of telephone information. So I know that if I'm going to talk to a babysitter before I leave, I'm going to say something like, here's my cell phone. This is the best way to get a hold of me. You know, make sure we have that. And, and I have to bring that up because one time I had a daughter who was at a home babysitting people and there was a problem and she called me and I said, you know, you probably ought to ask the parents, how about you just give them a quick text or something? And she said, I don't even know how to get a hold of them. <laughs> and I thought, no way, how did that happen? How yeah. could you end up there and not know how to get a hold of somebody else and you're watching their children? So along those lines, you have kind of a special tip that is going to not disappoint because they'll want, if they've picked the right babysitter, <laughs> if they've picked pro babysitter Nicole, they do this thing and she tells them to do it. Go ahead. Yeah, so first is to give them like an estimated time of when you expect to be home. And then second, text them when you are leaving your destination and they give them your... Your arrival time? Yeah, your arrival time. And I know I kind of use that time to kind of finish tidying up and make it so your house is clean and ready for you to come back. And so wait, you're cleaning the house. See, this yeah. is the thing. If you've picked Nicole, which she can't go everywhere in the world, and I know people in the chat are going to be saying stuff like, I want Nicole. Have Nicole come to my house. Anyway, and Nicole is probably not going to be a babysitter for her whole life, <laughs> but she is a marriage and family major and has just graduated which is, I mean, you definitely are all in when it comes to children and family, right? Anyway, but what you're saying is if someone picks a Nicole, then Nicole is going to be like, I'm cleaning up. I want this family, this husband and wife or whatever to come home to a relaxing environment where they feel like that they can integrate back into home without stress and burden of cleaning up after the little crafts you did with the children and, yeah. and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. Ah, I love that. I love that. Well, thank you for joining me, Nicole. This has been a fun discussion on what to tell your babysitter. Be sure to see our other video about how to choose a babysitter because that's going to be important. But I think if you've liked this series on babysitting, you're really going to enjoy my next video, which is called How to Teach Kids to Respect Their Parents. Go ahead and click on that link and we'll see you there.